Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to day three of the OpenStack Summit live CUBE coverage here in Vancouver, British Columbia. This is Silicon Angles, the CUBE. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host this week, Stu Miniman, Chief Analyst at Cloud and Converged Infrastructure for Wikibon.com. Uh, and it's you know, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, packed schedule, uh, an amazing event here in Vancouver. We get the shades on, we get the sun out, cruise ships, weather's perfect. Uh, really shining the light on uh, OpenStack's progress on the path to maturity. Uh, Stu, uh, day three, really um, a significant event for OpenStack at many levels. One is the traction that they have, this path to maturity, which seems to be the theme, and also the vibe is great. I mean, people are, it's growing community, a lot of first time uh, practitioners here. You got engineers across the board from software down to operations, you know, attending the sessions. It is so crowded in the technical sessions that people are literally sitting on the floor waiting to get information. And so uh, it's been pretty significant. Your, your take on this? Yeah, so, so John, it's funny, coming into this, you know, some of the press, uh, you know, were kind of really down on what was going on with OpenStack. Uh, you know, Business Insider, uh, you know, said that, you know, VCs are getting freaked out and they're pulling money out. Uh, one of the leading analyst firms dropped a report and said that OpenStack is really a science project and we expected to come to Vancouver and see clouds and, you know, probably a bunch of rain. Well, as we can tell here, uh, it is sunny, the, the group is excited, you know, between six and 7,000 people here at the conference. Um, you know, definitely, I, I think the number I heard was at least there's 400 uh, people that open, the OpenStack Foundation know of that are running OpenStack in production. Uh, Red Hat alone said that they have hundreds of paying customers uh, that are using their OpenStack solutions. Um, so, uh, I'm not ready to say that OpenStack has reached that maturity or that we're hitting the inflection point this year. Uh, I do think that with things like DEF uh, the big tent, inter Interoperability uh, that the the line of sight to maturity is there. Uh, I really, really expect that either by Tokyo in six months or Austin a year from now, which is going to go back to where it all started, uh, that we will be able to say OpenStack is mature, fully ready for prime time. It, it's ready for production today, but that you know really we're going to cross that chasm and get more people using it. Uh, so you know the the, the, the the spirits are bright here, and uh, you know everybody's excited. Stu, you got to highlight highlight some facts here for the folks out there. I want to get your thoughts on it. EMC's here in a big way. We had Brian Gallagher on who was running $11 billion business for EMC now, heading up what they call Platform 3, which is the emerging territory in this new era of cloud. You got Cisco and Red Hat talking about their partnership, pretty significant. You got Brocade, basically you know, with Open Daylight, just they've done some amazing things. They're in a good position. And then you get the core OpenStack community, which is, which is kicking ass and doing very well. The passion, the energy, there's a nice balance. So it's really good. I want to get your thoughts on that and, and specifically around how the converged infrastructure players are doing. Because what we heard from Gallagher was the tease out of, we got to make all the operational engineering work with this new software model. So what does that mean for the converged infrastructure players? What's the story? Who's winning? Who's losing? Who's, what, what's, this, what's the positioning? What are they doing? Yeah, so, so John, first of all, from a you know, fundamental piece of OpenStack, um, you know, the projects are, are in really good shape. Last year we knew that Nova and Swift and Cinder were really solid. This year, uh, Neutron's getting close. Uh, companies like Brocade you mentioned, uh, Cisco, HP, uh, Red Hat, all contributing, how Open Daylight is fitting into it. Uh, Neutron you know, is, is really close to getting there. And once we have those fundamental pieces, then how do we package it up? Uh, definitely converge infrastructure has been this huge wave. Uh, when Wikibon came out with uh, really the industry's first forecast on converged infrastructure, that was two and a half, three years ago, people thought we were nuts when we said that by uh, you know, later this decade, two thirds of all IT will be consumed in some form of reference architecture to single SKU. Um, but what we know is that customers want simplicity. Customers want to be able to be pulled together. Uh, EMC at EMC World uh, talked about how OpenStack fits into their plans, teasing out a project that they call Casper. Uh, and you know it's really an extension because if 
you know, converged infrastructure isn't just about pulling compute and storage and network together. It's really about uh, you know, managing things at more of a rack scale, getting out of our silos, uh, and enabling applications to be played a little bit simpler. Uh, in some ways, uh, you, you know, you, you're looking at just taking that from a virtualization layer, um, but we, we've got the emerging things, you know, more bare metal in there, uh, you know, more uh, containers uh, being in that environment. Uh, one of the vendors I talked to on the show floor is uh, a little startup called Stratoscale um, that actually, you know, enables from a software uh, standpoint, it can do, you know, VMs, it can do containers. Uh, Cisco has actually put some money into them. Uh, so, you know, there, there's a lot growing in this space of converged infrastructure. Announcement this morning uh, from SimpliVity, who's expanded to KVM, um, because that, that's still at a fundamental basis. There's some companies that are saying, you know, well, what does OpenStack do for me? Well, it, it can give me some flexibility as to how I look at the hypervisor environment, of course, being open source with OpenStack, you know, KVM goes great with that. Uh, we're going to have Mark Shuttleworth on today, who's going to talk about what Canonical's doing and LexD that they announced, uh, uh, had some announcements this week on. So, you know, convergence is definitely a consumption model, um, and it's tying more and more into OpenStack, so I, I like to see how those pieces come together. Um, OpenStack being an integration engine, and converge and hyper-converged options can really be that underlying, you know, f you know, stable platform uh, that you know sits underneath it. That layer that with OpenStack, uh, you know, go toward more commodity hardware. Things like Open Compute sometimes fit into it. So uh, a lot of moving parts, but you know, want to simplify all the pieces of the stack as we can. So converge and hyperconverge underneath OpenStack on top of it. New modern apps uh, helping to drive a lot of it. Uh, pull it all together. So Stu, what's your take on on the um, OpenStack's positioning vis-a-vis? the big vendors. We had some discussion about Azure, .NET, plugging in, you got VMware doing some stuff. Again, OpenStack is becoming the centroid point, or centroid of the, of, the, uh, of the cloud infrastructure. And there's a lot of integration points. Tease out what that means, and what is the strategy? I mean, there's, there's no land grab going on in OpenStack. Certainly the community has kind of shielded the Teflon uh, on the front end of this community is solid, where it's like no land grabbing going on. But there's integration points that are pretty interesting. Yeah, what, so is, what, what does that so all mean? So John, first of all, right. You know, no longer is you know, OpenStack trying to say, oh, we're your alternative to Amazon, and you know, we're going to kill Amazon. Um, it's, you know, a lot of this is for the on-premises uh, environment, hybrid cloud type solutions. Uh, you got, uh, we did a great interview I really enjoyed with Bobby Patrick, who talked about, you know, it's a multi-cloud world, and HP is going to work with your on-prem. Uh, they've got their public offering, and of course customers are going to have Amazon and Azure, uh, use Google applications, they're using Salesforce, and uh, the big vendors like HP, IBM, EMC, VMware Federation, uh, you know, and others are going to play into how do we pull all those together. Um, need to worry about identity management across these, have to consider security across all of these, um, and in, in many ways it's customers um, internally have to do their own uh, you know, evaluation of their application portfolio and what legacy applications are going in certain places and which applications they're going to modernize. I really think that's the, the, the air gap that I've seen in the industry for the last few years. Um, and OpenStack is going to be part of some of those modern applications. Because to be honest, John, from an infrastructure standpoint, many of the things that we saw are simplifying infrastructure, but haven't necessarily been enabled for the Hadoops and NoSQLs of the world. Talk about the developer impact, because you have a blend between developer focus here, DevOps is the, the ethos of OpenStack, but DevOps is now broadening this definition with cloud, cloud operations, the role of the personnel involved, the role of developers, the container component. What's going on with that, Stu? We, you know, last year at OpenStack Atlanta, it was containers rage. Not so much here. I mean, you're hearing it, or what's your take? Is it container-driven conversation, or is now containers a subset of the larger conversation? So uh, I actually liked uh, the, you know, the way the OpenStack Foundation, Mark Collier, put it in his keynote yesterday was, you know, we're really early in containers. I mean, we know that, you know, two years ago, we weren't having this discussion. Uh, Linux containers existed, but if you weren't Google or one of those other big guys, you weren't using it yet. It is really early. Uh, you know, Docker, of course, you know, the big player. We're going to be at DockerCon next month. Uh, CoreOS is actually going to be our next interview you, really excited to talk to them. And then you've got you know, the Kubernetes and Mesosphere uh, and a bunch of other pieces around it. And there's a few projects here, an open stack dealing with it. It's Magnum, uh, works with things like Docker Swarm uh, and Kubernetes. 
Cola is another one that fits in the container space. So a number of projects here to kind of tease that out. Uh, but John, yeah, I mean, in some cases, dev is the new ops. Uh, you've kind of talked about cloud ops in general. Uh, but the dev is worried about that application. And if we can simplify the underlying infrastructure, I use OpenStack as that integration engine so that underneath it just ties into the required hardware. It, it's a real opportunity to kind of move the needle because the, the unfortunate part is IT has spent way too much time and effort making you know bespoke infrastructure that they just have to spend lots of time keeping the business running, not transforming and growing the business. All right, Sue, I want to get your take now as the analyst, someone who's out in the trenches. I mean, you you work really hard. You know, you've got you work the parties like we all do. You're done the hallways. You're doing the analyst briefings. We are the hot spots in OpenStack, where are the danger areas, what's at risk, what's the developing area, where are the opportunities, and if you can kind of talk about that big picture landscape vis-a-vis -vis investment thesis around some of the VCs, we saw Menlo Ventures here, we see, you know, um, uh, you know, different kind of VCs here, there's investment going on, this deal's being done, so, you know, I'll see this activity, but where are the hot spots, Stu? Where, you know, you mentioned KVM with Simpli uh, Simplivity um, and others. What's going on? I mean, this, uh, there's some danger areas, there's some opportunities, there's some hot spots. What are they? Yeah, so, so first of all, a danger area. Uh, while we are reaching maturity in OpenStack, uh, the number one thing I've heard from the interviews we've done and talking to everyone is migrations uh, from going from one revision to the next is not non-disruptive. We all know in the software world, you know, we've got to get there. If this is the underlying platform and I have to have an outage to be able to go from one version to the next, Next, that's really not acceptable uh, for most companies to have that in a production environment. Of course, we can do it rolling, we have applications that can manage that and do zoning, uh, so there's ways around it, but uh, you know, the, the <laughs> OpenStack community is strongly focused on that. I talked to a number of software vendors that are finding ways around that that they can use their technologies uh, you know, to, to handle that one challenge. Um, unfortunately, John, you know, the whole kind of management and orchestration layer is still one uh, that we need to do a lot of work. You know, as my five years of being an analyst, I, you know, the joke has always been, well, you know, the, the big challenge to cloud is, you know, security and management. And here we are, 2015, still one of the major problems. Um, containers, things like Kubernetes and Mesos. Um, we'll, we'll talk to Redbeard in a minute, what CoreOS is doing to help try to solve some of those problems. Um, but it is still a big problem, and unfortunately, that, that, that one hasn't been solved yet. So OpenStack is no longer just an anti-AWS, uh, says Stu Miniman, Bert Lattimore was tweeting that uh, comment. Uh, expand on the impact of Amazon. Not so much that big shadow of Amazon um, here. I mean, I think everyone kind of puts that aside. That narrative is no longer viable because you're seeing different use cases in Amazon. W what's your comment on this and how do you dissect that and how do you explain that S to users? So the interesting thing to look at Amazon, of course, is they took uh, you know, what were just you know, tools that companies could use, uh, like you know, EC2, and EBS and everything else, kind of your compute, your storage, and your VPC networking, and companies could build a lot out of it. And R Amazon's been moving up the stack, things like Redshift, uh, things like uh, you know, their, their virtual desktop, uh, desktop as a service, uh, their database that they launched last year, their leveraging containers. Uh, so you know, that line between infrastructure as a service and platform as a service is blurred. One of our guests this week actually said that IaaS and PaaS uh, discussion is really all passe. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think that's true. Uh, so how does the OpenStack community go beyond just bu being that, you know, infrastructure layer um, and help leverage, uh, you know, moving up the stack uh, with the API economy to create new applications? And th there's a lot of opportunity there, John. So we are here live at the OpenStack Summit here for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is day three. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We've got a lot of great guests. And I guess in summary of day one kickoff is, I mean, day three kickoff here is, is that we've had two days of great announcements, but this is a learning show. It's continuing to grow. A lot more people here learning. Great momentum, and again, I would say that the trajectory of OpenStack Stu is up and to the right. Uh, has it kicked up fully on a scale basis? It's getting there, but it is on a path to maturity. Uh, final thoughts before we get into the interviews. Yeah, I, I think you're totally right there, John. I think that the line of sight to maturity is there. I think we've identified and have uh, you know, good pieces in place. Um, we will see you know, who makes a lot of money off this because you, know, you got you know, companies putting you know, thousands of people at this, uh, this problem. Um, you know, what kind of margins can they make? The business business 
you know, models for making money off of open source is difficult. So as we get everybody stamped with Powered by OpenStack, how do we differentiate? And if I can actually interoperate and move workloads around, it's going to be fighting. We are a long way um, from saying that cloud is commoditized. Um, you know, but uh, you know, th th there's a lot of things on the business side to hash out. Uh, we're going to be talking to one of the VCs today uh, to, to get an update on that. Um, and you know, big players making a lot of moves. Small guys still very active in this environment. Uh, you know, more startups coming in the space. Uh, so it's been a fun one to watch. Okay, we are live here. We'll be right back with our next guest. Day three coverage continues here at the OpenStack Summit live in Vancouver, British Columbia. This is theCUBE. Um, thanks for watching. We'll be right back with our next guest and want to thank our sponsors for letting us come here for three days. Without the sponsors, we wouldn't be here. Uh, EMC, Red Hat, Cisco, Brocade, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, and, um, and the OpenStack Foundation, and The OpenStack Foundation, really awesome. Thank you for your support. Uh, support the sponsors, and again, we'll be back with more coverage after this short break. <laughs>